Hello and welcome to Face Off here on France 24. This week, the ex-companion of François Hollande crosses the English Channel to promote her tell-all book about her tumultuous relationship with the president. Her visit takes place just as new pictures of the president with an actress are published in France. Also on the menu this week, this coming weekend, the Conservative Party will have a new leader. Former President Nicolas Sarkozy is in pole position. However, his candidacy for the 2017 presidential election still faces major hurdles. With me on the set, Stéphane de Vries from RTL4 and Philip Turl from Radio France International. So Valérie Trier-Veyler went to London on a much publicized book tour. When her memoir came out in France a few months ago, it clearly hurt the president uh, personally by revealing his alleged misbehavior with her, as well as politically because of negative remarks on France's popular categories. As Valérie Trierveller was granting a series of interviews to the British media, photo of François Hollande with the actress Julie Gaillet in the presidential palace created further controversy over his private life, but also about security lapses. Let's take a listen to Jean-Christophe Cambadélis, the leader of the Socialist Party, and his thoughts about Valérie Trierweiler coming back into the limelight. I knew that revenge was a dish best served cold, but I didn't know that it could be served several times. With this book tour abroad, she strikes again. This story makes me uncomfortable. To attack or ridicule the president from abroad. It makes me really uncomfortable. Ça me met vraiment mal à l'aise. Malaise, according uh, to Jean-Christophe Cambadélis. What do you make of uh, Valérie Trier-Veller going on this book tour, granting interviews just as uh, new elements of François Hollande's busy private life uh, come out? Well, she's clearly uh, on a revenge tour, and uh, she denies it. Well, yeah, that's that's. I'm not a psychologist, but uh, probably. Uh, a lot of psychiatrists would say something similar. But um, nevertheless, her book sold really, really well in France, over 700,000 copies. Which is huge. Which is huge. Uh, she uh, made approximately 1.5 to 2 million euros only in France. So it's really understandable that she's publishing this book in other countries as well, especially in Anglo-Saxon countries where these kind of stories are, are, are where the people love these kinds of stories. So uh, from, an, uh, from a business point of view, um, she's really smart. Philip, uh, you know about uh, British media, of course. Uh, there have been lots of uh, coverage on TV and in, in, uh, in print about uh, this book. But also, uh, in the interview she granted, she also explained that François Hollande was still uh, trying to tell her, I will get back, I will get you back, sorry, uh, while uh, the, those um, pictures of his alleged relationships are coming out and she said well it's proof that he continues lying well the problem is no one knows who's lying in this in this story but he doesn't look good he doesn't look good but I don't think she looks very good either and I think uh, maybe she's a little bit uh, off the mark as what I think she thinks the impact this book is going to have in Britain because I think that um, the British enjoy having a go at the French uh, they will lavish this up, they will lap it up and say this is another example of how badly France is run, how uh, things don't happen like this in the United Kingdom. Uh, for example, just one thing is that if, if um, a British Prime Minister or member of the royal family were caught at three o'clock in the morning on a moped in central London uh, with a crash helmet going to see their mistress, uh, if, it, it, if it was a, a politician or a prime minister or a minister, there is no way they would remain in office in the UK. Whereas in France, if it's, it's the president, it's sort of tolerated and people just say, well, it, he, he wasn't uh, at work at that time. He could do what he likes. But you have to be exemplary when you're president of, of a country. And I think also when you're the first lady in the eyes of the British. So they will find this quite strange. And I think as well as uh, the damage it's done to Francois Hollande as as, part, as 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 far as being president of France is concerned it's it's damaging 
to the whole of France. The image of France has been damaged by this book, by these revelations. It's made a mockery out of French politics, out of the president, and out of the French political system. And I think that is damage that's going to take a long time to heal. Uh, for François Hollande, on the political level, because that's what we're interested in, uh, as I said, uh, some of the remarks that, that, that uh, he allegedly made uh, hurt him uh, here in France. The fact that she's continuing uh, to hammer him on his private mm -hmm. life, but also on who he is, is a, seen as a threat, you think, in the Elysee Palace? They've been surprised when this book came out. Do you think they're trying to get her under control in one um, way or another? I think they try to do some kind of damage control, yes, they do. But uh, on the other hand, I, have not, I don't have the impression that this book really hurt François Hollande in a political way, especially not in France, because he's already so unpopular, uh, very few, little things can even yeah, worsen his position. Um, and I think, in general, the French really don't give, a, give, give something about what, what's happening with the, well, what they consider the private life of the president, even if the presidential function uh, is being affected, or at least the image is being affected by, by this book. Uh, so I think um, we talk a lot about it, but in, in general, uh, he, he won't be damaged uh, politically. Maybe uh, on a more moral level, yes, but in politics, no. I don't think it's doing him any favours. I think that no, that's uh, that's sure. Uh, that's for sure. He, he, as you said, is very low in the opinion polls, not for for the relationship with Valéry Trévélier, but because of unemployment, because of the lack yeah. of growth, because people don't have confidence in him. This is just another knock. If he'd got any chance of coming back up, he's just lost another point in, in opinion polls over the last month. If he had any chance of gaining a bit of ground. She's done the necessary to stop that from happening in the short term. OK, uh, on the other side of the political eye, Nicolas Sarkozy, his predecessor, seems to be a shoe in for uh, next weekend's election at the head of his party. But the real fight will be between him and the poll favorite, former Prime Minister Alain Juppé, who is not running for the party leadership, but for the 2016 primary uh, that will designate the presidential candidates. However, the knives are already out, with Sarkozy fans booing Alain Juppé several days ago. L'UMP a été constitué sur la base de l'Union et du Centre, et je continuerai à militer pour ce rassemblement de la droite et du Centre. Surreal, it seems, uh, that they're both in the same party. One is a guest of the other at a meeting, and boos are heard. Uh, obviously, everyone says, oh, it's not a big deal, but it seems the war has started. It's, it's very impolite, actually, and it's not very smart of the, uh, the people in the, in the, uh, who were there, because actually it means that the UMP is, is, is does no longer exist. Alain Juppé is a very prominent figure in the, in the Conservative Party. He's a former PM. Um, he's also a, a pretty popular amongst the French, uh, even at the, the people who usually vote uh, left. Much more than Nicolas Sarkozy. Much more than Nicolas Sarkozy, of course. We, he's still very controversial. Um, and I think one of the, the, the most well, the most poignant thing in this, this uh, meeting was the fact that Nicolas Sarkozy didn't do anything uh, to stop the crowd of booing uh, Alain Juppé, who is a minister of state who has a very good reputation in France. And uh, even if Nicolas Sarkozy doesn't like him, he should have at least had the elegance to, to tell the crowd, hey, you're here in the city of uh, Alain Juppé in Bordeaux, please behave, or something like that. But clearly this shows that Nicolas Sarkozy thinks he will handily win the election for the party leadership. His rivals are not that important, and that his target is Alain Juppé, and that he's signaling maybe, although he denies it, that he's willing to use any means to go against him. And this was just a perfect occasion, as he's had for a long time, to, to uh, win one over on Alain Juppé. He could, as Stéphane said, have gone up to calm down the crowd. I think you have to look at it on a wider spectrum than that. We, we had, um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy suddenly changing his mind during a meeting about uh, the, the gay marriage bill in this country, which was uh, voted in uh, after François Hollande uh, came into office, and that some of the right wing, some of the hard right, said they're going to get rid of this bill if they come into power. And during this meeting, Nicolas Sarkozy was with a group of, of, the, of people who, who, do, who don't like this bill and want it uh, changed. And he suddenly changed in his, in his speech and said, OK, well, yes, so uh, if I get voted in, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll change it. Um, and now this time round, he's with a group of supporters who are 
more from the right within the right wing, more from the far right, in Bordeaux, which is Alain Juppé's home city, of which he's mayor. So obviously when Alain Juppé got up to talk to these uh, supporters, he didn't think he was going to be booed because it was in the town where he's mayor, where he is appreciated. But if you looked outside, you saw these touring buses because they brought all these people in, especially for Nicolas Sarkozy, because Alain Juppé has made it clear that if he wants to win the presidency of France, he wants to win it with the support of the centre, which is why the UMP, the Union for a Popular Movement, was created in the first place, whereas Nicolas Sarkozy has made it clear that if he wants to win the election, it's with the support of the right, within the right wing, and not from the centre. And that's where the two men are, are differing in, in the way they want to support things. The only thing at the moment which I think everyone is unanimous about, is the union for a popular movement is anything but a union because there are so many different factions all uh, squ squabbling with each other that Nicolas Sarkozy has even said that if he does get into office, he's going to change the name. Very quickly, uh, Stefan, uh, could this, if Nicolas Sarkozy wins uh, this weekend, uh, herald a, a real war, especially about how the primaries to designate the candidate for the 2017 uh, presidency are going to be organized. Yeah, I think the war is already going on and uh, it's, it may be a cold war, but uh, what we've seen in Bordeaux this last weekend is, is an example of that. And uh, yeah, Sarkozy, I think it just wants to get rid of the UMP party because it's basically the party that was uh, founded around Nick, uh, Jacques Chirac in, in 2002. And he just wants to get rid of that uh, past because he doesn't want to uh, govern with the, the center. Uh, so I think uh, this Sunday will be the last day of the existence of the UMP. Well, we'll have to see what happens. We'll talk about the results of this election next week here on France 24. See you then.